at UC San Diego Health, being prepared for any kind of disaster is crucial. And when catastrophic events hit, we count on a spirit of flexibility and cooperation. This video will explain what you need to know and do during an emergency. At UC San Diego Medical Center, we have well-established disaster plans and resources. We use the Hospital Incident Command System, often referred to as HICS. HICS is a standardized emergency management system used in hospitals across the country, which organizes the operational response plan and chain of command for the entire facility. Um, we're expecting probably an influx of patients coming from this earthquake location. We maintain an emergency cache of supplies enough to last 96 hours. We stockpile nerve agent, antidote, and other pharmacy disaster caches. For hazmat incidents, we have a decontamination trailer, decon resources, and decon teams ready to go. And on the UC San Diego Health Pulse site, you'll find information about our latest evacuation and disaster plan. We use HICS to manage all these kinds of situations. There are two responses described in the UC San Diego Health Emergency Operations Plan, Code Orange and Code Triage. Code Orange is activated whenever there is an emergency inside the facility, such as a flood, power loss, utility outage, or computer network shutdown. Anyone who encounters such an event can activate a Code Orange by calling the hospital operator at 36111. During a Code Orange, information is shared by text pager and email. It may not always be announced on overhead speakers. You can check the status of a Code Orange by calling the code information number listed on the back of your yellow disaster information ID tag. Calling a Code Orange will activate the hospital command center. The incident commander is in charge and will determine what components in the emergency plan need to be activated. In a Code Orange that involves injured persons within the facility, the most senior physician available will triage the patients at the scene. Generally, injured inpatients are managed by their individual services, such as trauma, while visitors, employees, and outpatients are sent to the emergency department or trauma resuscitation room based on their medical needs. If all or part of the hospital needs to be evacuated, the hospital command center will coordinate the process. The evacuation plan describes the areas around the medical centers to which patients can be taken prior to transfer to other facilities, how they're going to be evacuated, who and what should accompany patients when they leave, and what is done to track those patients. Our second type of emergency response is code triage. Code triage is called when a mass casualty incident occurs in the community, such as a natural or man-made disaster, terror attack, mass shooting, or pandemic. Anything resulting in a significant surge of patients to the medical center. During code triage, the facility is locked down. All patients entering the hospital must do so through the triage area set up outside the emergency department. In a mass trauma event, it is important to remember that only about 20% of the patients will actually be critically injured. Active shooting and bombing incidents can produce large number of casualties, but not all of them need to be admitted to the most critical parts of the hospital immediately. The triage officer assisted in the triage area is by a communicator, a scribe and others needs a large number of gurneys and lots of runners to get those critically injured patients into those critical areas first. Other patients need to wait and go to the delayed and limited treatment areas. Code triage can only be activated by the on-duty ER physician. It is signaled by pager and overhead announcement. All staff must remain on site until the incident has been assessed and instructions are given. The all clear is signaled by pager and overhead announcement. For updates on a code triage, call the code info line. A recorded message with frequent updates will explain the status of the activation, the details of the incident, and any special off-duty staff requests. Physicians responsible for inpatients should review their patients and determine which patients can be safely discharged or moved to a lower level of care. Paperwork and discharge instructions and prescriptions should be ready in case immediate discharges are necessary to create open beds. Physicians assigned to critical care units need to identify patients who could be transferred to a lower level of care. They should also identify the number of beds that may open within the next two to six hours. Charge nurse of the ICUs will relay this information to the hospital command center. 
Staff with clinical duties or with essential tasks should continue doing those duties as assigned by their supervisors. Nursing staff without essential tasks can be sent to the nursing office to look for new duties. Non-clinical staff can go to the labour pool and be assigned other duties by the labour staging manager. All elective surgery is cancelled unless the incident commander issues an emergency waiver. The trauma director at Hillcrest or the general surgeon on call at the Thornton Hospital may also assign surgeons to the trauma resuscitation and shock and holding areas. The emergency department may request assistance from surgeons. Anesthesia teams not working in the operating room or in trauma areas should assist with area management in the emergency department. Physicians who are not assigned elsewhere who are working on a clinical service Clinicians who have completed discharges and clinicians who are off service but available should report to the emergency department for assignment. You may be assigned a patient to manage. Staff on shift on their units will fill required jobs as assigned by the departments or they may be reassigned based on availability and emergent need. Staff may be held over and extended into the next shift if the emergency requires this resource. Unassigned and available nurses at Hillcrest should report to the nursing staff office. Nurses at La Jolla report to their assigned Jacobs Medical Center, Thornton, or Sulpizio unit for reassignment. Additional non-nursing staff should report to the labor pool. They may be assigned to other duties as needed, requiring fulfillment of alternative roles and responsibilities if the need is considered vital to the operation. The labor pool is usually located outside the auditorium at Hillcrest, and at Thornton, it is at the third floor foyer overlooking the lobby. It's also important to ensure that each patient is registered and assigned a unit number and ID bracelet before they enter the hospital at the triage site. Numerous ID numbers and wristbands have been prepared for use just in case and will be immediately available for assignment. This is necessary in order to order tests, transfuse blood, give medications and track the patient. A temporary triage name may be assigned to the patient until the actual name and identification of the patient can take place. If you are assigned to a single patient, you must stay with that patient, order appropriate tests, and manage that patient until a disposition is reached and an inpatient physician takes over. The patient flow is determined from triage. If a patient appears to have traumatic injuries and requires emergency surgery, the patient will be triaged to the trauma resuscitation room. If they do not appear to need emergency surgery, they can be triaged to the emergency department where a more delayed workup can be instituted. If they appear to have simple lacerations and are ambulatory or have mild medical complaints, they will be triaged to a limited treatment area. Other special areas may be set up during a code triage. The shock and holding area is an extension of the trauma bays and is usually located in the PACU. The limited treatment area is for walking wounded, minor injured, or psychiatric patients. The limited treatment area at Hillcrest is in the orthopedic cast room in medical offices north. In La Jolla, the limited treatment area is the emergency department, urgent care center, or Perlman offices. If the volume cannot be managed there, the limited treatment area could be expanded to the rest of the outpatient clinic floors. Additional care areas may be designated during a mass casualty event to manage overflow and information will be disseminated at the time as to where these are. You may be assigned to help in any of these areas, not necessarily in your usual specialty area. During a code triage, the standard for maintaining health records may become impossible to follow. Disaster medical records may be maintained on paper or in the EPIC system. Interventions and diagnoses should always be documented. At a minimum, we must track name, date of birth, allergies, medications, comorbidities and treatments given. Entries must be signed, dated and timed by the physician and any transfers of care should be noted. The Emergency Preparedness Advisory Committee handles disaster planning but you must be personally prepared as well. Ensure that your department and the telecommunications office have your updated home and cell phone, pager and email information. Find out from your chair or clinical chief where you might be assigned during disaster. If you're not at the hospital, when a code triage occurs, you should make yourself available to come in if needed. Prepare your family too. In the event that you are separated or out of contact, a family disaster plan can reduce worries. Your family plan should include a disaster kit with food, water, and individual items. Learn about the utility shutoff valves within your home. Understand evacuation routes and how to care for your pets. 
as well as identify rendezvous locations. We also urge you and your family members to enroll in warning systems, such as the San Diego County's Reverse 911 system, which can notify you and your family if your own home has to be evacuated. During a disaster involving a surge of patients, the standard of care may change. Resources and limited supply, such as ventilators, CT scans, and ICU beds, may have to be triaged to the patients who would benefit most. A surge may require that only life-saving tests and procedures are done. For example, closed fractures may be assessed, splinted without x-rays, and referred to clinic. A population outcome means doing the greatest good for the greatest number of people. California state guidelines suspend various regulatory requirements during a declared state of emergency. Physicians have legal immunities for patient care performed under emergency declarations. After action meetings or hot washes are held after every exercise and real response. If you participate in either situation, this is the opportunity for you to present your ideas and how things went and make suggestions to improve future responses. The aftermath can also be a stressful component of a disaster. Anyone involved may have a reaction to a critical incident and participating in stress debriefings is strongly recommended. UC San Diego has counseling teams ready to support our staff. Debriefings can help clarify what happened and then what can be expected to happen next and we do urge you to participate. Thanks for listening and if you have questions regarding your responsibilities in disaster, please contact emergency management.